Welcome back to the Fiverr experience. So last time we finished all the orders from the basic and the standard tiers. What I didn't mention previously was that there's actually a fourth tier, an extra hour of working time to the standard package in the gig extra section. So today we're doing four of these extra tier submissions and the final $200 one. Dear Hala, please turn my brother into a tall, he's two meters, and evil looking cyborg in a futuristic environment. Thank you. All right, I don't know why, but looking at real people's faces makes me uncomfortable, but I suppose I'll do my best. <laughs> this is all the references I gathered. It's mostly from Cyberpunk 2077 again, epic meme lol. Such a great reference for this type of imagery. Let's go. <laughs> oh God. All right, we're starting this one off with a little thumbnail to make sure the composition I have in mind will work. Now I'm starting to draw the lines for the background over the thumbnail sketch. I'm trying to get the one point perspective to read so that I will know what the perspective will look like on the character as well. First, I thought he should just be standing there menacingly, but I reconsidered very quickly and made him be walking in this long hallway looking thing. I'm not sure what exactly it is. It doesn't really matter though. All they said was that it needs to look futuristic. Doing some cheating, a little bit of tracing over the guy's face, but I just wanted to get it to look correct on this time limit. But hey, we're moving on to 3D because I thought instead of trying to get it to look accurate by hand, I'll just lay down in 3D because it's just blocks. It can't possibly be difficult, right? And it wasn't. It was cool. I, I am glad I did it. It wasted a little bit of time that I could have spent working on the character, but it doesn't really matter. The background makes the piece pop and come alive way more than if just the character would be rendered. So I finally started coloring with just 20 minutes left on the clock. Very bad. Let's continue though. Like this is the first time I actually got into the flow state in this video where everything was going really smoothly and I was really in the zone and it was all going well. But sadly the timer has come to an end and I did 20 minutes over time just to be able to deliver something that isn't like super unfinished looking. I mean this is very unfinished looking but at least it's not super. I'm not sure if the guy looks similar at all in my picture. And my breakthrough moment was when I realized how to do the reflections on the head like this. It's literally just a reflection of this long ass stripe that is on the ceiling and it was like damn i'm a genius when i figured that out hey yo hey hey what up cd this is a painting of your brother being an evil tall cyborg in an underground facility containing google servers hope i captured the likeness enough enjoy deliver work Hello, Hala man. i really like your drawings of the skeletons in fancy clothing just the i b i n g So, I would like a skeleton, wearing clothes similar to dandelions from Witcher 3. It's just royalty clothing? I have no idea, but thank you. Alright, damn, um, damn, da damn. Wow. Yeah, this is cool. I like this outfit. Since we got three hours, we can really make the outfit pop. And I don't even need to do any excessive reference collection because Submitter knows what he's looking for. The reference picture I used for the pose was a guy in full clothing and I tried to transform it into like just bare anatomy so that I can put my own clothing on top of it. But it's like I have a bad habit of doing like really detailed anatomy rendering before I even start drawing the outfit on top of it. And it's like totally unnecessary because it wastes so much time and what I could do instead is just make like basic shapes that are roughly in the proportions of a human. Like I could have kept those. <laughs> basic shapes that I did at first and like just drawing clothes on top of that. Now these clothes though, I mixed and matched a couple of images I found on Pinterest and combined like my own 
original outfit from them. All right, so we're getting to the coloring phase now, which is the most boring part of the process, sadly. But after we're done here, we get to the juice. We get to the part where it all starts coming together, which is the shading, which is my, it's my favorite part of the process. And I always have the least amount of time for it because I spend way too much on the fucking anatomy first that I didn't need to do. So I have like half an hour for shading which is the most important part. It makes the biggest impact. It doesn't matter though. I really like the end result. It looks cool, very nice. All right, I'm out of here. All right, here we go. This is the final result. Very cool. I am enjoying the way the materials turned out. It doesn't look very medieval. It looks like a modern version of the medieval clothing, perhaps like in 2040, this will be the normal fashion on the streets. Hey, live it out of hay. This uh, this golden skeleton man is, is enjoying the attention while all dressed up. Enjoy, please enjoy, because otherwise I'll be mad. If yes, three left. Hello, Chala. I hope this helps you pay rent. I shared with you an image of a character from Shin Megami Tensei or Persona series that I drew a while back. All I know from waist down is that she is YouTube link. You can put her in the pose you'd like. Just make it spicy. Thank you, Chala. I'm glad to have this opportunity. Okay, it's a samurai with the cleavage showing. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> what's this YouTube link they send? Oh, great. It's extra thick. Extra thick! Okay, it's some uh, game character of some kind, but like uh, a spicy version of her. Okay. I'm actually rather satisfied with how the anatomy is turning out here. But the thing is, I'm gonna have to draw clothes on top of it again. So again, why do I do this to myself? That's the question. <laughs> But it's no big deal though, because these lines that I'm doing here are looking pretty smexy as well, if I may give myself credit here. Like I used to be a man of line art. I used to do a sketch first and then line art on top of it. I kind of merged them into one stage nowadays. I wouldn't call this line art that I'm doing, but I also wouldn't call it a sketch. It's like a drawing. It's like an in-between area. I like that kind of workflow. It saves time, no more dual passes. All right, so we are two hours into this one and I officially have no idea what I'm drawing. Like, this is why I want people to be more specific. Like they just said, like, let me pull this up again. All I know from waist down is that she is, and then it links to a video that says extra thick. You can put her in the pose you'd like, just make it spicy. Am I supposed to modify the suit from the waist down in a similar way? Or what am I supposed to do here? Like, I don't understand. So this is my interpretation of must be spicy from the waist down. Damn, it actually fits kind of well actually <laughs> but i mean like it's, it's not inherently spicy it could be interpreted as like a dangerous situation where the guy's about to die it's all in the eyes of the beholder don't ask okay i'm just gonna continue doing whatever this is I have like half an hour to do the shading yet again. I thought I'd go for like an interesting lighting situation, like like a cloudy but sunny day at the same time, like the sun is shining through a thin cloud. The top half of the character is more in the light and bottom half of the character is more in the shadow. It's like a very subtle transition, but it is there. Goodbye guys, I'm a dip. Hey, what's up, Jujuspa? Here is my interpretation. Wow, interpretation of your request. I couldn't quite make out what you were looking for, but here's my take on it. Hope you enjoy it. The request I have is for my personal Pathfinder character. He's a magus, which is basically a blend between a fighter and a mage. I have a personal drawing. I'm not an artist, obviously, so have a good laugh at it, and a photo of a figure I made for him. He has short brown hair and green eyes with a cocky demeanor. His right hand wields a cutlass and his left casts spells. An electricity spell from his hand that harks onto his cutlass would be fantastic. I don't have a specific preference for a pose, but either a battle stance or an arrogant pose showing off his magical ability would be great. If possible, a light mist slash smoke coming from below him would be a nice touch and as for a background, feel free to do whatever you think would look nice. Keep up the incredible work. Your videos inspired me to try drawing him myself. Sure, I mean, um, very cool stuff, very interesting stuff. Let's mix these two together then. The battle stands and the arrogant pose with the showing off the magic. I'm gonna mix those two together and it's gonna be epic. 
All right, so starting out with the thumbnail again, I had a set idea. I wanted to go for like a top down angle where he's doing this magical thing. I used a reference for the anatomy this time, which is why it's not looking as detailed as last two times, which is good. Like it doesn't need to be detailed because it is going to be covered in clothes. It's a good choice of uh, clothing because you can show perspective with the gambeson armor very well. It's got like this checkers pattern on top of it, which gets wider at the top when it's facing the camera more and more tight at the bottom where it's facing away from the camera. So we can uh, read the perspective rather well. All right, so let's shade this bad boy with half an hour again. <laughs> I wish I would have gone for a more stylized approach with his face because it looks a little bit awkward in my opinion. Like the nose specifically, it should have been facing up a little bit more. It looks like his nose is punched into his face. <laughs> I'm looking at these like two weeks after completing them where I'm recording these voiceovers with a fresh eye. So damn, that's something I wish I would have changed. But the lighting itself is pretty juicy though. I like how that turned out. All right. I start these out in a very stupid way. Yo, this is uh, the Magus guy in action showcasing his electricity spell. Did as much as I could within the time limit. You enjoy. <laughs> Sipping on lean. Moment of the truth, we have reached the last one, the guy that got the supporter package. I'm kind of scared what it's going to be. Oh, okay. There is just... A file. Let's see this. Hey Hala. I saw you were doing another Fiverr video and wanted to help support. Been following for a short time now but think your content and art is great. Honestly was not sure what to request. If possible, looking for you to do some sort of composition including my pet ball python. I attached a view reference photos for you. I will leave it to you on what you want to do with the piece. Let me know if this works and will not be too boring for your video. It's a snake. It's a two hundred dollar snake. We have four hours to draw a snake now. Like imagine your body just being like that. You don't have any limbs. You just have a head and the torso that is like five meters long. Life must suck for snakes, man. They can't do anything. They can just fucking crawl around and eat. They can't spend thirty hours in five drawings like I do. All right, so this one is a pretty interesting one. I wasted a lot of time trying to build the snake in 3d but like my knowledge of 3d isn't that great not that it really matters because i was just going to be using it as a base anyway but it took a lot of time to get this right and i wasted like a full hour of the four hours on just doing this 3d base which i barely even used the thing is like the snake's body is very long at the head it's very narrow but at the middle it's pretty wide and the perspective i chose makes the snake's body look kind of flat because because his narrow head is close to the camera and his fat middle body is away from the camera. So like these two things cancel each other out. It's a very strange situation. Now another thing I want to talk about is, is this worth $200? I'm only getting $160 for this, but for this person who ordered it, I mean, they chose the supporter package, which I said is disproportional. They could have gotten it cheaper by adding like two extra hours on top of the two hour tier, but they made the choice to get the expensive one to support me, which is cool. I appreciate that. But like, is it objectively worth $200? I guess it is. It's hard to say what artwork is worth. Like you aren't just buying four hours of my time you are paying for the experience that i've had in general like the years of experience and the practice that have led up to these four hours so that's why it's hard to say objectively like i got some comments on the first episode of this where i did the 100 dollars commission with the guy in the mountain and people were complaining about it in the comments like See, that's not worth 100 dollars. this guy gets skimmed but it's like other people got shit for five dollars and ten dollars and they got more than what they paid for so obviously the hundred dollar one seemed out of proportion and it was but it was still fair price the others just got it like super cheap so i don't know leave your thoughts down below and how much you think this picture is worth <laughs> I guess I'm gonna up the prizes again next time I do this video because damn, my gig got overbooked so quickly. It's crazy. I think I can charge more and I do think my work is worth more when I look at these results that I did in just three hours. But yeah, time's up.
this is the $200 snake. Was it worth the $200? I sure hope so. I especially like how this part turned out. It looks rather photographic. I think I'm satisfied. Maybe, maybe I don't like this empty space. The snake should be like more in the middle of these two branches. Whatever, okay? Thanks for watching. Leave a like.